Let's talk about that classic tale of Oliver with a Disney twist, Oliver and Company. And in particular, I want to do a character case study on Fagin. Hey Disney addicts, I'm McGann, you're watching The Fangirl, and it is time that someone talks about this movie that barely missed the cutoff for the Disney Renaissance era, Oliver and Company. And I have got to dig deep on the vagrant, multi-dog owning human, Fagin, because he has got some peculiar, unaddressed layers going on in this film. But first, many of you watching weren't born before 1988, and so you may thusly need a recap of the film. Basically, a kitten in a free-to-good home box doesn't get adopted, ends up washed up in the streets of New York City alone and starving, and so he helps a dog named Dodger steal some sausages. Then the kitten ends up in a gang that features so many puppers. We have Tito, Francis, Rita, Einstein, plus Dodger, who all live and work with Fagin, a not unhoused, but definitely a homeless looking individual. So the dogs help Fagin rob people, which is good for the plot, because Fagin owes this mafia boss, Sykes, a bunch of money, and Fagin has three days to either pay up or to have his mortal coil shed on his behalf. And the dogs are out there trying to make an honest living robbing cars when the poor little orange tabby gets captured by this neglected rich kid, Jenny, who brings the kitten home to Fifth Avenue, where he's named Oliver, and Oliver becomes the bane of Georgette the show dog's existence. But overall, he has a beautiful life now. That is, until the Fagin dogs show up to rescue Oliver and bring him back. Then Fagin notices Oliver's collar, decides to ransom the kitty to get the money he needs, and then can't bring himself to go through with his plan once he realizes the owner of the cat is a little girl. Sykes is lurking in the background though, and he decides that no, he's going to nab the girl and ransom her now. So mostly the animals rescue Jenny. Everyone then comes to her birthday party at the end where her parents are noticeably absentee. And then Oliver stays in the nice house living the high life. Huzzah! Oliver and Company is a cute movie. The voice actors are really good. And I love that Georgette's song has become a get ready with me trend on TikTok. But the songs are very hit and miss and the writing in general lacks a lot of quality. You could walk your dog through the plot holes in this movie. But I found Fagin to be a very interesting character, and I think he deserves a good dissection. So Fagin appears to have his base camp set up in what looks like an abandoned houseboat. And we have no idea if this boat belongs to Fagin or if he just found it one day and took it over. But that means he's technically not homeless because he's got shelter and things like a television. So he's doing better than most people in his position who don't have a house or an apartment. But Fagin is definitely not well off compared to Sykes or Jenny. Now, even way back in the 80s, there were a lot of state and church funded organizations to help unhoused individuals. And Fagin does not appear to be getting help from any of them, which makes this more interesting. I've heard interviews with homeless people who say they will not go live in a shelter because they can't bring their dog. But I've also heard it repeated over and over again that a lot of people who stand on street corners asking for money from passerbys also like to own dogs because people will hand them a lot more cash. In fact, I grew up in a city where a man who had a house and a big flat screen TV got himself several dogs, one of which was three-legged, and then dressed himself in tattered rags every morning just to sit on the street corner next to Walmart. And this guy actually made quite a healthy living by bumming for money, largely because people felt so much empathy for the dogs. Fagin parallels that man for me way too much. And just a side note that I am very jaded on this topic because I've seen behind the curtain a few too many times. I've seen people who are begging for money all day walk into a house. I've seen a couple who regularly stood outside holding a starving baby sign next to a stroller, and then they would pull a baby doll out of that stroller and jump into a $70,000 truck. So I would hand a homeless person food, but I would never hand them money with all the jaw-dropping examples I've seen. That's just me though, you do you. Anyways, Fagin
Hagen has trained his collection of dogs to fetch items of value from people. However, Fagin seems to be as good at dog training as he is at the rest of his life because the doggos bring back items like torn up wallets with no money in them. The dogs seem like a passing fancy of an idea that he had one day of, hey, I know, I'll get dog pickpockets. Do you know how to train them? No! Okay. Shh, don't stop him. Let him learn. And that makes the issue of Sykes all the more intriguing because Fagin is thin, but he seems to be getting by all right in terms of food and shelter. So I have a hard time figuring out what Fagin borrowed money from Sykes for. The film never says. It's also never mentioned how much was borrowed, but it's an amount that Fagin has spent and can't get back. And we all know he didn't buy dog food because the dogs have a conversation about how they have to forage to get their own sustenance every day. So Fagin is also a bad dog owner in addition to a bad dog trainer. And I mean, it would make sense if Fagin borrowed money to get an apartment and maybe some wardrobe in order to get himself a job and go on the straight and narrow path. But nah, whatever he needed money for, he used it up quickly. Not to mention, on the flip side of this, why would Sykes loan any money to a homeless man? Sykes could have taken one look at this guy and known he'd never be able to pay him back. And it's not even like Sykes was using that loan as an exploitative force to force Fagin to work for him. So it seems like Sykes had a real killing boner and just legit wanted an excuse to terrorize and end someone and Fagin fit the bill. But what could Fagin have used that money on? Well, honestly, the only two logical answers are that he either has a gambling problem, meaning Fagin might have taken out a large loan to place a surefire bet that did not turn out to be so sure or fiery. And while that notion could work in theory, I don't see why the movie would not make mention of gambling issues at all. Then there's option two. Fagin is a junkie and he needed money to feed his habit, which does seem to align with his personality. Fagin's temperament goes all over the place and there are multiple occasions in the movie where there is something frightfully unnatural about his eyes. It's as if Fagin has a lot of trouble regulating his own emotional state. Now, when your brain chemicals aren't right and you have big ups and or big downs, it can be really hard to maintain a life in a society where you're expected to work and pay bills and focus. Then add in issues like not being able to afford medical care, therapy, or prescription drugs, and that's where you'll end up finding a lot of people trying to balance themselves out through self-medication, meaning either drinking or narcotics. However, people partaking in either of those things can become even more unstable and unreliable. So a lot of these people end up having to decide whether they want to feel better internally or to be functional on a day-to-day -day basis in society. Fagin definitely strikes me as the type to be self-medicating some kind of condition like bipolar disorder. Plus, come on, a person of sobriety doesn't come up with a plan like, hey, I'm going to adopt five dogs that I cannot feed and teach them to be pickpockets and carjackers. That came from the mind of someone who was high AF. And when a person who becomes dependent on narcotics can't afford to buy their next dosage, they tend to do some pretty crazy things like rob people or take money from loan sharks because they often can't see around corners to realize they'll face consequences. They're too preoccupied with getting their next hit. Again, all of these attributes just scream Fagin for me. And the film totally forgets that Fagin is a villain. He not only tries to ransom Oliver, but he has no problem stealing from people or otherwise hurting them. He doesn't even care if his dogs get fed or if they end up picked up by the pound and put to sleep while he lets them roam the city with no legally required tags. 
just because Fagin had a change of heart when he saw Jenny, and just because Sykes is a more pronounced villain, that does not let Fagin off the hook for the kind of person he's displayed to be over and over again. This character is a junkie who doesn't think anything through and doesn't care how he impacts or damages other people. And his only redeeming quality is that he tries to save Jenny after his own actions put her in danger danger. Fagin isn't even an anti-hero who reluctantly gets forced to be in the spotlight. He's literally dealing with the consequences of his own actions. And we're all supposed to act like that makes him a good guy? Fagin never even admits that he caused all these issues for Jenny, and he never tries to take accountability for himself. Leave that man in the gutter, he belongs there. It also bothers me that the person supervising Jenny, this all-in-one nanny, butler, chauffeur, and cook, decided that it's a good idea to let Fagin into their home for Jenny's birthday party. Like, uh, what? I get why Jenny would want to invite the dogs and Fagin, because Jenny doesn't know that Fagin was the one ransoming Oliver. But who in their right mind is going to hear this story and let a young girl cozy up to someone like Fagin? No. I won't accept this, it doesn't make any sense, and it throws off the entire ending of Oliver and Company. I get they wanted a big happy ending, but there has to be a more sensible way to do this. Hook fagging up with a job, have the birthday party in a public park, something that seems a little bit sensible. Just ugh. But since this movie existed in the awkward period of Disney films where they might be okay, but not the greatest or most sensibly told stories, how do you feel about Oliver and Company, Fagin, and the ending? Let me know in the comments. I might be overthinking it, but that's literally my job. Well, family members, we're almost done, but I want to invite you to hang out with me in some other places. I'm on Twitter and Instagram as my own personal self, and I have a Facebook page too, but I mostly just post photos over there. And sometimes people say, hey, McGann, I want to mail you something. How do I do that? Easy. Just click the About tab on my channel page, and my most current P.O. Box info will be right there. I also run another channel, The Family. It's really a hodgepodge channel where we might post anything. Oh yeah, and I also sell shirts and stickers and stuff with the family and the fangirl logos. If that is your cup of tea, I have a link in every description of every video. Finally, if you want to help out the fangirl channel and make sure I'm putting out video essays for years to come, the best way you can help is by subscribing and watching more of my videos, whether they're new, old, whatever. Maybe even share one or two on social media, help spread the word. People who watch to the end of videos like you helps to tell the site, hey, this is a good video. We should recommend it to other people. So if you made it this far, leave me a comment of something like, hey, I made it to the end. Love ya. See you next time, family members.